Black Jupiter, more like you're watching Black Jupiter, with me, Agent Random. Welcome to the third and final installment of our journey to uncover every Easter egg in the World Ends With You series. Or at least it will be our last installment until Square gives us a new game or I hate myself enough to figure out how to make a video for Live Remix or the Fieldwalk RPG. Oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be free from the series, am I? Well, whatever, consider this video a celebration because today is the 16th anniversary of the series as a whole and second anniversary of Neo. They grow up so fast. Last time we took a good long look at the world ends with you, the animation, and learned how more care is put into its easter eggs and into giving it decent pacing. Today we return to the realm of gaming and talk about Neo, the world ends with you, the direct sequel to the original game. Or the anime, I guess, if you're Tetsuya Nomura. Why on earth did he say that? I gotta give the same exact disclaimers as I've done the previous two times. Since this is the final part, spoilers for the whole series. You better hurry up and play these games if you haven't, because sooner or later, I'm gonna run out of different ways to tell you to play them. Save me some trouble and just get it over with already, alright? If you're fresh off of having just played Neo, but are a little rusty and older material, I'll make sure to provide as much non-Neo context as is within reason. And disclaimer 2, we are dissecting the English localization of the game for reasons such as, I don't know what this says. Alright, and with that out of the way, real quick there's one easter egg that has been brought to my attention that I missed from the first game. This one is courtesy of prolific community translator Zeta. The character Nana Majima appears as both a shot shopkeeper in the first game and a background cameo in the anime, but I failed to notice that both her and her shop are a reference to the manga series Nana. Her design is based off of the character Nana K. She also sells the gold padlock necklace thread item which is worn by the Nana character Ren. The item description even has an indirect mention of him claiming that it was made in honor of that legendary punk rocker. Okay, I promise that's it. Now for real this time, let's change our fate! I played this Steam port for the first time for this video, and because of that, I got all of the pre-order bonuses right off the bat. The most memorable of which are the Legendary Thread set. These are all the clothes worn by previous protagonist, Neku Sakuraba, who also does appear in this game as a playable character, albeit with a different outfit. Most of these were thread items in the original game, although they now have a different name, stats, and branding. The tank top says that it was based off of the Jupiter of the Monkey Bodhidharma tank top. In the original game, the thread in question was just called Dharma, so I assumed that Bada Dharma was its legal name. The shorts notes that one of the buttons looks to have been reattached by hand. This is a result of an infamous scene in the first game where Shiki forces Neku to take his pants off so that she can repair them. One of the other items gained is a new Jupiter of the Monkey hoodie called Virupakasa. Jupiter of the Monkey, along with Natural Puppy and Tiger Punks, are returning brands from the first game, with all three never having gone out of style in a 3 year long 14 year gap between games. All of the new brands in the game still follow the Chinese Zodiac theming of their predecessors. That is to say, each brand is based off of an animal from or associated with the Chinese Zodiac. Uh, I'll talk about you later. The game opens with a text conversation between Rindo and Fret. Throughout the game, characters make frequent use of stickers, and Rindos are references to Final Fantasy creatures. And they're specifically modeled after their appearance in Final Fantasy VII Remake. We can see a Tonberry, a Chocobo Chick, a Moogle, a Carbuncle, and a Cactuar. The background that Rindo has on his Messenger app is the same design that he wears on his coat. While we're on his design, his hoodie is from the aforementioned Jupiter of the Monkey brand, meaning that both protagonists wear the same brand, though parts of his outfit definitely feel more Monaco to me, such as his face mask. Just like Neku wore headphones to represent Hear No Evil, Rindo wears a mask to represent Speak No Evil. Another homage to the proverb about the Four Wise Monkeys. Rindo wears a mask to represent his reluctance to take charge and properly lead others or even his own life. Don't worry buddy, we'll be fixing that over the course of the next 40 hours or so. As Rindo goes to meet with Fret, he bumps into a businessman. This is just a generic design that's used for a ton of NPCs in this game, but the hair and suits make him kind of look a lot like him. Makoto Mickey from the first game, who is notably absent from this installment, and no, Square is not yet forgiven. Soon, Rindo gets a talking with his gamer girl GF about Fango, a cross between Final Fantasy and Pokemon Go. I imagine this is where all those stickers came from. Some of its creatures include the Nutkin, which first debuted in Final Fantasy V, and the Poopoo, which I, did I pronounce that right? Poopoo? 
Whatever, I'll just roll with it. Which first debuted in Final Fantasy VIII, along with the aforementioned Cactuar, which first debuted in Final Fantasy VI. The person he's talking to is Swallow, who will later be revealed to be the Reaper Shoka. She likely chose the name Swallow since it's an animal associated with Hanafuda. Hanafuda is a sort of Japanese playing card, and the Shinjuku Reapers all have aspects of their characters centered around certain cards, usually determined by their birthday. In Shoka's case, the Swallow actually has nothing to do with her birthday, but the connection to Hanafuda was intentional, I swear. At the very least, her name contains the kanji for cherry blossoms, which are associated with her birth month of November. Rindo, who hails from Shibuya, has a name much more based upon the Chinese Zodiac, just like characters from the first game. His online name is Rin Dragon because he has the kanji for dragon in his name. He shares this trait with Joshua. Following this exchange, the game introduces the mechanic of mental notes, which is just the game's objective checklist. Interestingly, these fits really well with the lore we're given about Rindo in the secret reports where it's stated that Rindo is very good in taking other people's ideas and opinions to internalize. Basically, he's really good at keeping track of a lot of stuff, and that's here as a gameplay mechanic. Neat. As is just tradition at this point, a certain someone can't help but make an early cameo. Fret tosses a reaper pin over to Rindo, but Rindo totally fumbles the catch and it lands at someone's feet. This person picks up the pin and hands it back to Rindo. The person Person is Joshua. Perhaps the curse is not yet over. As the two head into Dogenzaka for lunch, taking a detour to its back alleyway will let you find a piece of graffiti of Black Saturn. This is one of the darklit planet pins from the first game. The design also appears on the stairs in Utagawa. Swallow tells Rindo that she caught her nutkin in the scramble, and after all the chaos that ensues when Rindo and Fret go there to find her, the person that they run into first is Shoka. But before that, you might be able to notice that they're already starting to tune themselves into the UG upon leaving lunch. Aside from the support reaper that sort of just spawns as they leave the building, all of the NPC dialogue has been changed. Before lunch, Rindo was able to overhear bits of their conversation, but afterwards all of the text bubbles change to be thought bubbles. When the two do reach the scramble, there's a big focus on Rindo using replay for the first time. But did you also know that Fret uses his latent ability remind early? Right here. Whoa, it's like a movie about people who can do that thing. Uh, what's that called? You know, the brain power thing. What is that called? Uh, it's gonna drive me crazy. Come on, think. Oh, psychokinesis? Bingo! We then get a first look at Shiba. I haven't really seen this mentioned elsewhere, so I can't 100% verify its credibility, but it seemed to check out to me. According to Twitter user at Bravado Kara, Shiba's design was based upon Japanese entertainer and host named Roland. The resemblance is especially clear when looking at early concepts for Shiba. Rindo also gets a pseudo-vision during this scene of what we will later learn is the final boss arena. And now we have our opening! Early on, we can see all the brands flash by super quickly. When the spotlight on Nagi happens, she trips, dropping all of her pins. Of the ones that we can see, there is Azumaru, Keisen Kanesada, and OMG Lightning. Afterwards, the opening focuses on Mina Mimoto. We transition to him via a wolf noise because shows a lone wolf. He then kicks down a bird, which is reminiscent of how one of his main goals in the game is to snag Rindo's time birds. He also does one of his signature poses. There's a shot where Kubo walks past Sugumi and smiles, which shows that this man is responsible for every bad thing that happened to her except for her poor characterization. The song used for this opening is a sort of mashup of a bunch of different songs from the game's soundtrack, and when beat is seen, the song shifts to Twister, the main theme from the first game. When we first see Shoka, she shows her phone screen to Rindo as foreshadowing to the reveal that she's the one on his phone! Then Neo turns into Persona 5 for a few seconds to pay homage to the game game of which the concept of Shibuya originates from. The opening shows us Shiba fighting Rindo, only for Rindo to revert things and go back in time, which is exactly what winds up happening in the game's final chapters. After the opening is finished, Shoka hands Team New Kids their starter pins, which were amongst some of the pins Neku started with in the first game. We soon meet Susukichi, who speaks in references to Reversi, or maybe Othello sometimes. I had a hard time differentiating the two in my research, and so did all of human history, apparently. Either way, it's a game with two players, one is light and one is dark. We enter our first battle, so let's take a moment to go over some of Fret's battle dialogue. He has a tendency to slip in references to popular songs during 
during a fight. As an example, when using the Discord dance or Maiden beat pins, he can say, Feel the groove! In a reference to Cartouche's 1991 song, Feel the Groove. I want to say that Fret saying, Hey, take it easy! is a reference to The Eagles' 1972 single, Take It Easy. When guarding, Fret can say, Can't touch this! Just like in MC Hammer's 1990 single, You Can't Touch This. When Fret casts fire, he can say, Feel the heat! Just like the title of Jean Beauvoir's 1986 song. When Fret uses a water-based attack, he can say, Splish Splash! In a reference to Bobby Darin's 1958 song, Splish Splash. And when winning a fight, Fret can say, Another one bites the dust! which is the name of Queen's 1980 song. He also drops that last line again on week two, day four. Those are all the ones that I'm pretty confident in. That said, I do sincerely hope that Fret saying, let's get down to business, when starting to remind is a reference to I'll make a man out of you from Mulan. Also when casting wind, Fret can say whoosh, in a likely reference to a nearly two decade old meme about missing a joke. Other characters do have the same line, but Fret in particular loves to reference memes just as much as he references music. Like how Fret refers to the concept of scanning as using his galaxy brain. This is a reference to the galaxy brain internet meme that originated back in 2017. Those may not be the only meme references Fret drops either. Well, actually they definitely aren't the only ones, but I'm just saying that for the sake of a segue into the next point whatever. Right afterwards, Fret calls this support reaper sus. This is often attributed to be an Among Us reference, although it is worth noting that the word had significant popularity long before Inner Sloth's game became a cultural phenomenon. The word even appears in other thoughts throughout the game and in Final Remix, so I wouldn't actually call this an Among Us reference. That said, Fret does use it back to back with Imposter during week 2, and I refuse to believe that isn't intentional. Not too long after, we meet Mr. Minami himself, who is reintroduced along with a new remix of Transformation, his boss theme from the ports of the first game. Minamimoto is sporting a brand new design, including this jacket, which is actually the $1,800 croc pattern long jacket from the real-life brand Black Honey Chili Cookie. This brand also appears in the game as a shop, where all of its items are priced just as they are in real life. This cameo exists due to the friendship between its designer, Kei Takahara, and Nomura. Also, the shopkeeper, Hiromu Takahara, is an homage to him with both having the same last name. Kei Takahara even voiced Hiromu Takahara in the Japanese version. Unfortunately, Takahara has since passed away. Back to show, he states that the game is 142,857. As Rindo points out, thanks to the power of Google, that is a cyclical number. Though the two don't know it yet, they'll soon learn that this game has no real end and continues to loop for as long as Shiba's in power. Sho famously calls his associates in this game Zeptograms. This is similar to how he called players in his game last time Yoctograms. A Zeptogram is ever so slightly larger than a yoctogram, so it seems that Sho has an ever so slightly better opinion of these two newbies. Minamimoto then expresses surprise at the player's abilities to utilize any pins that they come across. This is because in the first game you needed to have enough imagination to use certain psychs. In universe, it was explained that Neku was sort of cracked out because he could uniquely use them all. Since pins are equipable by everyone in this game, it's stated that the pins themselves just made themselves more accessible. There's this voice speaking over an aerial view of Shibuya. By digging into the game's code, it can be learned that this voice is Joshua. The next day, Rindo drops some primate facts and Fret calls him Dr. Zoolittle in a reference to Hugh Lofting's century-old series of children books. This day also features this simp of a reaper who's like really into Shoka. He mentions wanting to buy her a big house, big cars, and big rings. This seems to be a reference to BTS, a South Korean boy band that mentions all three of those big items in at least three of their songs. Fretch names the team the Wicked Twisters. This keeps up his song referencing Shtick, but this time he's referencing the in-universe song Twister. I believe this is also the first time that we hear Fret's Quay voice line. He uses it as a substitute for what, likely due to Quay sounding a lot like the Spanish word que, which 
which means what? Koi itself is the sound that chocobos make in Final Fantasy. On the third day, Sho claims that the Ruined Bringers don't play by the rules of rational numbers and that they are an aggregate function of a higher order, which foreshadows that they are all, in fact, Reapers. Also, if we're being honest here, their name is the Ruined Bringers. Did we think that they weren't going to try and destroy the city? On this day, you'll gain access to the Gatonero store. Of course, this brand was completely designed by Shiki and Eri, with Mr. Mew being their mascot. But as an extra detail, the denim cap, denim micro mini skirt, and mid calf boots are all evolutions of items that Shiki made for Eri in the first game. Oh, and the bell sleeved two piece has a design that matches Eri's necklace. After two days straight of not eating, you're finally able to go and grab a meal. An interesting observation is that Sho really likes sweet food. Aside from being a subversion, since sweet food is stereotypically seen as non masculine in Japanese media, developer comments clarify that Sho likes sweet food because the sugar keeps his brain active to run calculations. This day takes you to Tipsy Toes Hall, and while there, you might come across an NPC who's running an errand for his boss. He was tasked with grabbing a fuse, but doesn't remember remember what a fuse is. All he remembers is that he got one in that game he played a while ago. This is all a reference to the first game's third day, where 777 tasked Futoshi with getting a fuse. This is actually a double easter egg, since the title of the thought shares its name with the show Mission Impossible. Later, we can see a pin from the in-universe dating sim Elegant Strategy. The pin in question is of the character Tomonami, the apple of Nagi's eye. As is pointed out in-game, Tomonami is very similar to Minamimoto. The name Tomonami is even two letters off from being an anagram of Minamimoto. This is the first day where we can meet Nagi. Her shirt has the otherworldly ability to constantly change What's written on it. Going off of translations by Reddit user u slash kimchi who, here are the translations. Her main church says that her fave or waifu or other equivalent is the best. When she wins a fight, her shirt reads Big Win. When diving, her shirt says Pardon the Intrusion. When she's not interested in a meal, the shirt will say A Different Dish Next Time. When eating a meal that she likes, her shirt will say something along the lines of Thank You for the Meal. When eating something that causes her mouth to go into light show mode, her shirt says something like I've decided to become a regular. When she's about to eat a meal, her shirt most likely says House Special. And lastly, in battle, her shirt says Expel Evil spirits. Oh, and because there's not really gonna be a better time to mention it, Nagi's birthday is July 27th, which is the release date for both the first World Ends of You game and Neo. It's also today. Later on, when Fret reacts to Nagi's hostility towards him, he says, and I oop, which is a meme originating from Jasmine Master's Handle Your Liquor video. This day is also the day when Rindo learns replay, and with it, the grand plan for him to generate the soul pulvis by storing dissonance and his reaper pin being begins. The Reaper pin design is noted to have changed throughout the story, as more and more dissonance gets crammed into it. But not only does the pin design change, but the scan icon in the bottom right does too. This can first be seen at the start of the fourth day, and continues to happen every time Rindo changes his fate. Oh, and now Nagi's playable! When casting a light spell, she can say, Oh holy light! likely as an homage to Adolf Adam's A Holy Night from 1847. When doing a mashup, she can say, Let our powers combine! In a reference to the famous line from Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Let our powers combine! Oh, and when gaining groove with Fretz, he'll comment that her moves are like a boss. Just doing my job. Like a boss! This is both a song and a meme reference. The song is The Lonely Islands Like a Boss from 2008, which his titular phrase has since become a meme that I want to say eclipses the song itself. This is around the point where you'll first gain access to the social network and can unlock Minamimoto's node. Its unlock is hard mode, which is also what his sicker unlocked in the first game. Early into the fourth day, the player has the option of doing a side quest where they can help Aiji Oji remember how how to solve one of his ramen issues. He says that he wants to recapture the taste of something that Sebastian used to make. Sebastian is a name that Kendoi went by when he worked for the prince. Going off of the description of the meal given by Aji Oji's memory, he was most likely referring to Ramen Don's Mystic Ramen Meal from the first game, which has the same ingredient list as what Oji describes. The same meal can also be brought up in one of Dogenzaka's NPC's thoughts. The prince then remembers what he was missing from his recreations of the meal was love. 
This was the conclusion reached in the legendary ramen day of the first game's second week. Don Burrytown's assistant manager can also reference this when you browse the menu since this shop is also owned by Ken Doi. More on Ken Doi, he's now more widely known as the Don and is into curry. This is a reference to his real-life bassist, series head Tatsuya Kondo. In between entries, he developed a deep passion for curry, and that's now reflected within his self-insert. Tiger Punks is back from the first game and still carries some of its signature clothing items. The red mohawk set, biker jacket, tiger biker vest, and spiked choker are all from the first game. The cotton biker vest is also back, just renamed to the red biker vest. Same deal with the tartan coat being renamed to the red plaid coat, the skirt bondage combo being being renamed to the skirted bondage pants, the bondage half pants being renamed to the bondage shorts, the white rubber soles being renamed to the white creepers, and the double spiked cuff being renamed to the spiked wristband. The patched biker jacket is an updated version of the patchy biker jacket. The bondage pants no longer specify that they are the black variation since there was and still is no other color option. And lastly, the white linen shirt looks to be part of the same series as the pink and grey gauze shirts from the first game, and it's item description mentions that the designer just sort of forgot to make a white one until now. And that's not all, because Natural Puppy is also back from the first game. The black jeans are back, my favorite One Piece was revamped into the delightful dress, the lovely One Piece had a ribbon added to it so it became called the lovely dress, the simple mules were renamed to the minimalistic mules, and the simple necktie was renamed to the standard tie. The lovely camisole has been renamed to the cute camisole, and its item description mentions the same model wearing it in the same photo shoot that was mentioned in its item description from the first game. And that detail is shared with the Angelic Dress, a newer model of the Angelic One Piece. And while you're at Natural Puppy, getting max FSG and browsing around for a while will cause Kana to say that everything that Rindo buys becomes really popular for some reason. This is in reference to the trend system from the first game. When players in the UG wore clothes or pins, their associated brand would become more popular in the RG. This confirms that while the gameplay mechanic is no longer present, it is something that is still happening. Also, if you drop by Kony Kony, you can pick up the Petunia Pants and the Anthurium Boots, which descriptions imply that they're made as an homage to Eru. Everyone's favorite food item, air in a can, can technically be first acquired on this day. It costs 4,280 yen and somehow fills 428 calories. The numbers 4, 2, and 8 can be pronounced as Shibuya in Japanese. Fret back on his meme train later says in response to the suggestion that he use Remind on himself, come on. Aw, that would never work. Unless. Which is likely a reference to the just kidding, unless, meme popularized by Twitter user at Indeprive when she tweeted, What if dot 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 put my Minecraft bed dot 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 next to yours dot dot ahaha comma just kidding dot dot unless dot dot question mark. In my replay of the game, this was around the point where I got the achievement for mastering 10 types of pins. The achievement is named 10 Pin Master in a possible reference to 10 Pin Slammer, a minigame from the first game. There are also around two NPCs in the game with thoughts related to it, as well as an esports team for the game made up of a couple of the shopkeepers which can be read about in the social network. This is the first day where you're able to snack at Kyoto Sweets and meet its shopkeeper Ryoko Kawahara. She has the same last name as Fuya Kawahara, leader of the Deep River Society. Should you unlock her node on the social network, it will tell you that she is married and did so for the money. Oh my gosh. You're able to go and pick up some new tunes at Tower Records this day, like the song New Game, the game's opening. The description reads that there's no stopping the countdown now. With that mix of song title and description, this is almost surely a reference to the multiple countdown teasers that have plagued the World Ends of You community for nearly a decade prior to the game's release. Full video in the corner. In places like Spain Hill or Takashita Street, you might come across a pin rack containing various pins from the first game. The pins are Ice Risers, Earthshake, which Spain Hill looks to have a defect version of, Blizzard Cool, Sexy D, Blown Kiss, Psychokinesis, Adamantite, Lazy Bomber, Meteor Magnet, Top Gear, Beauty Launcher, Bear Hug Magnum, Aqua Ghost, Burning Berry, Ninakiri, Mikazuki, Eyes Full of Hope, Kaleidoscope, Peaceful, and Thunderrook. 
On day 5, the player first hears of the Paroxidols, an idol group really into sanitization and social distancing. Of course, they're all one big reference to COVID-19, which was most widespread during the game's development. It's also called out how Rindo's face mask is not a reference to COVID and is really just there for fashion. Later on, Rindo will have to give a few Deep River Societists a password. One of the wrong answer choices is Simple and Clean. Simple and Clean is the name of the original open opening song for Square Enix's Kingdom Hearts series, which is often closely associated with The World Ends With You. I'd play the song here, but I'm pretty confident that Yutada Hikaru herself would order a military strike on the channel if I did, so I'm just gonna not. Simple and Clean is also the name of the West Exit Bus Terminal location for Shepherd House. You play or soon unlocks Kubo's node on the social network, which grants them the ability to chain together more noise at once. This is likely foreshadowing to Kubo's reveal as the noise. Noise Master. Day 6 is the first day that you gain access to Utagawa. Cat's mural is still there along with all of its associated references. Actually, Cat seemed to have done some more work in between entries since his mural can be found in way more places now and with slight alterations like having the Shinjuku Reaper logo as a part of the design now instead of the Shibuya Reaper logo. But the most notable addition is right next to his main mural. There is the graffiti of a pair of headphones and angel wings that was shown at the final episode of the animation. This has got to be one of the few references to the animation in Neo. Some sequel turned out to be Hanamura. Well, except for maybe the song Act the Fool. This song is secretly an updated version of one of the anime songs turning. On the final day, Nagi swoons over Minamimoto for one of the final times. And in this instance, by actually saying the word swoon out loud, her affection is so strong that it manifests the Petals of Love pin out of nowhere. You finally gain access to Ryoji's shop on this day and can buy your first pin with a time psych. I note this since even though the first game didn't have affinities for their pins, no pin used a time-esque psych. But time-based attacks were used back then by Megumi Kitaniji. The player soon fights Susukichi for the first time and hears his boss boss theme were losing you. While most of the boss themes could be interpreted one way or another, this is one of the few songs that very clearly represents a character or story event. In this case, it's Susukichi and how he feels like he's losing Shiba and, by extension, his Shinjuku family. The day ends with Fuya's erasure and it keeps the same erasure effect for players from the animation, having him dissolve into balls of white light. Though, how Reapers dissolve into both noise static and balls of white light is not kept up. Week 2 time! In the Kroki Panic Shop, the Samurai Wig, Schnaz, Spectacles, and Santa Gear items are all returning ones from the first game. They just didn't have the Kroki Panic branding back then, and the Schnaz Spectacles were just called the Nose Glasses. Bet you the ones from the first game are off-brand knockoffs that just couldn't legally use the real name. While we're here, the Roller Skates item description references the musical's Starlight Express and almost name drops it. Almost. Heading outside and scanning around Takashita Street will let you find someone thinking about how the last thing that they want to do is to be eating at Cutie Pies. They refer to it as their last supper, referencing a famous moment from the New Testament. Also, this thought has an almost title drop. Mixed with Breaking Free, this game has a tendency to put almost title drops in fairly random locations. At the end of the day, we hear the song Scramble in association with Sugami. While it now has different lyrics, Scramble is a new version of the song Shadow from Final Remix. Shadow was played as one of the main themes of A New Day, which featured Sugami's first real in-canon appearance. Wake up, baby. On that same note, Scramble is sold alongside the game's returning songs rather than its new ones. 
Upon arriving at Cat Street, scanning around, Mike lets you find a woman talking about being in Aijioji's fan club, The White Angels. The White Angels was the name of Aijioji's fan club that Shiki made in the first game's Another Day. Interestingly, this thought cannot happen in this game's Another Day. Just like with Tiger Punks and Natural Puppy, many of the Jupiter of the Monkey threads return from the first game. The Gekirin sneakers, Karma Shoulder Bag, and Naruka Rucksack all return. Fudo is renamed to Waterproof Hat, and the Varuna t-shirt is a slightly updated version of the Sutin. Also, I think the Om sneakers are supposed to be a new version of the On thread item. The shopkeeper is also the same exact guy who ran it in the first game, Keiichi Okada, or K1 for short. When failing to get to Not Neku in time, he ends up erased by Sugumi. Kubo is the one encouraging her to do it, and some of the dialogue that he uses is a little too similar to what Uzuki says to Neku in the first game when encouraging him to erase Shiki. Both even tell the other that they should just pretend like they're erasing noise. This is one of the few correlations between Neku and Sugumi that managed to survive into Neo after I imagine many more were planned for the original version of The World Ends With You 2. Uh, but I'm getting up. Topic. You'll soon first gain access to the second Shepherd House shop, and if you know what you're doing, that can eventually lead to you obtaining the pin back to the future. Continuing what I guess is a trend now for every game in the series to somehow reference back to the future. The second day ends with a battle against Mr. Mew. During the fight, Mr. Mew becomes giant and shoots lasers from his eyes. This, along with the nighttime cityscape in the background, is an exact recreation of Shiki's third tier fusion from the first game. Now that beats playable, we can hear his new battle quotes. If you equip a fire pin onto him, he'll be able to say FLAME ON! in a reference to the Human Torch from the Fantastic Four. As for his animations, his dodge is taken straight from Final Remix. Oh, also, if you equip Monaco's face mask onto Beat, he'll wear it into battle. If you ask me, this should have been a feature for every clothing item for every character in the game, but I don't make the rules. As for his food taste, I checked to see if it was consistent with his likes from the first game. And yes it is! In the first game, Beat tended to love all meals that were heavily meat-based and disliked most desserts. The same holds true in Neo. There really isn't a specific food item in the first game that reappears in Neo, but Beat does hate the salad item from the first game and hates all of the salad at Veggie Lovers. The only thing that he tolerates there is air in a can. Finally, Beat freaking loves Kendoi's curry in Neo. While curry wasn't available to eat in the first game, Beat did state numerous times throughout that game's another day how big of a fan he was of curry. Moving forward a bit, day 5 opens with a flashback of the Shinjuku crowd first arriving in Shibuya. The entire cutscene lacks the typical cut-ins used for just about all of Neo's other cutscenes since this one is trying to mimic the cutscene style of the first game. Also not an easter egg, but while I'm on the scene, I may as well clear up a misconception. Shinjuku Reapers do still have wings, it just so happens that all of the named Shinjuku Reapers are officers which have hidden wings even in Shibuya. We later learn that Beat has never heard of the Prince. Now while Beat is a little slow, he never actually met the Prince in the first game or had any mission that revolved around him like Shiki or Joshua. Around this point is when you first gain access to the trick card psych from Monocro. The cards that it shoots out have an ESP or Zenner design on them, just like Shiki's cards from the first game. Interestingly, the Gatornero trick cards pins don't do this, you know, the ones that would have actually been made by Shiki. On day 6, Rindo gets a vision of Moltoi being attacked by Shoka. In response to the attack, Fret says, Guess you should fear the Reapers. In a reference to the 1976 song by Blue Oyster Cult, Don't Fear the Reaper. Motoy refers to Rindo as Mr. Twister. Mr. Twister is the person referred to in the song Twister. After all these years, we finally met Mr. Twister! Now to find out who that freak with a high kick is. During Motoy's boss fight, he opens a fundraiser to get himself back up from a website called Fund Me Please. A clear reference to GoFundMe. Following the fight, Kubo drops a quick reference to of mice and men. And here's a fun one. Afterward, you unlock Moltoy's node on the social network. The ability that he grants is Noise Magnet. But this is also the same exact ability that his second in command, Sumio, gives. Moltoy just can't help but copy another. Next day, Shoka joins the party, and as she does, the player unlocks the stuck in the middle pin as a subtle nod to the situation that Shoka finds herself in throughout the game. Now that Shoka's here, she has some references baked into her quotes as well. She can say, 
is Get significant. Wrecked. Which is a 2011 meme originating from online gaming foreshadowing when she later comes out as a gamer. She can also say flock off, or as she pronounces it, fuck off, to foreshadow her identity as Swallow. Lastly, she can say, I pretend I do not see it, when running away from battle as a reference to another meme. And now I can point out a detail with the game's battle animations. When doing a charge attack, Rindo, Shoka, and Nagi all have their poses based on those from Dragon Ball Z. Rindo does a spirit bomb pose, Nagi does a Kamehameha pose, and Shoka does a Masenko pose. I don't watch Dragon Ball, so I hope I got those right. The day ends with an introduction to our first noise form. If you recall from the first video in the series, I stated how all of the noise forms were determined from animals in the Chinese zodiac that are hidden in the names of the corresponding character. But like I mentioned with Shoka earlier, Shinjuku Reapers prefer to take inspiration from Hanafuda cards. Actually, I think this was going to be more explicit in the game since one of Kaye's beta designs shows him with what I think is a Hanafuda card. But let me get back on track. Each card has a month associated with it, and the month that a Reaper's birthday falls under determines their noise form. In Sugumi's case, she was born on January 1st, and January is associated with the crane. That's why her noise form, Gruus Cantus, is a crane and is fought near construction cranes. I'd also like to mention that Sugumi is the only non-angel to have repeating numbers like that for her birthday. 1-1 one, one is an angel number. It's also New Year's Day, which I guess fits really well for her being from a new day. Hey, 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 we have one more week to go. On the first day, we begin to see the effects of Shibuya Syndrome. While the game tells you that it causes people to become depressed, empty, or just flat out pass out, it also has the effect of changing people's Twitter handles to at down with the syndrome. First off, yes, every single person affected by this has the same exact Twitter handle, and two, this is a reference to the 2000s song by Disturbed, Down With The Sickness. And don't worry, my Twitter handle sing as that agent random to make it easier for you to follow me there. Man. What? The, the frick is X? Seriously? Or. Whose entry fee was that? Later, Karya drops a line explaining what he likes about Shibuya that's identical to one he dropped in the first game. On to the final second day. This day is called Dearly Beloved, which is also the name of Kingdom Hearts' iconic title screen music. This day is all about Ayano, and while searching for her, Shoka interrogates this Reaper and describes Ayano as someone with long hair and a mean RBF. In response, the Reaper asks if she's blonde. It's quickly brushed past, but if you stop to think about it, this Reaper is clearly getting to description confused with Mitsuki Konishi from the first game. This man's an OG. Along the way to Ayano, there is this side quest where Eru thinks the prince called his voice detestable, while the prince actually thought it was delectable, like the spicy kick of masala. I bring this up solely because the prince famously makes another spicy food-based comparison in the first game when he tells Neku that he's dressed like a spicy tuna roll. The stay concludes with a battle against Ayano's noise form, Iris Cantus. Just like with Tsugumi, she has the birthday correlation with the Hanafuda card. Ayano, being born on May 18th, corresponds with the Iris, which is represented by May. But she also has the word for Iris hidden in her name. Also, the Iris is Shibuya's official flower. Well, at least according to the Choi Wiki and Nangi in Week 2. Google wasn't loading for me, so I couldn't find another source for that, but it would be pretty ironic for someone who hates Shibuya so much. During the boss fight, Ayano reminds us all that water is in fact bad for you, and in response, Fret says, Ah! It's raining pain, my dudes! This is likely a reference to the 2014 Tumblr meme, It is Wednesday, my dudes. On the third day, Rindo orders an orange tea fizz from some drinks, and yes, the item is his favorite from the restaurant. Good observation. Later, or earlier, depending on how you want to look at things temporally speaking, Rindo tells Shoka that Fret can't use Remind on him while he's time traveling. In response, Shoka tells him, that's rough, buddy, in a reference to a meme from Avatar The Last Airbender. And Neku's back! His return is scored by Twister. The song is generally associated with him. Also, he has a haircut. I mentioned in the first video that his hair was lengthened in the first game's main story so that he can hide his face better. And it stayed the same in another day because he had been procrastinating on visiting his barber. But now in Neo, he finally has his shortened hair. His hair is still long in a new day, so I'm just gonna head canon that Coco had to spend some time giving him a haircut before sending him back to Shibuya. Just like with Beat, I checked to see if Neku 
Neku's food taste was consistent with the first game. And yes again! In the first game, Neku was at least content with pretty much every food in the game, with only six getting on his bad side. And while they're different, there are also only six foods that he doesn't like in Neo. Also, dude still loves his chicken nuggies. His animations in battle will also be familiar to players of the first game. His charge, run, dodge, and showtime animations are all from the first entry. Around this point, you'll start running into grunge wolves. I note them since they share a name with the taboo wolf noise from the first game, but aside from that, they don't share any relation. The day leaves Shoka in a bad mood, which Nagi capitalizes on by shilling for her favorite game. We see some of the key art and can see that aside from Lord Tomonami being a mirror of show, the player character looks like Nagi and there's a character that looks like Beat. Soon after, Uzuki begins texting with Rindo, the stickers that she likes to use to pick the bunny. And if you remember from the first video, I said that Uzuki has the kanji for the bunny hidden in her name. Y'all just wait, one day we will get that Uzuki bunny noise form. Just you wait. The day also has us see Fred and Nagi finally understand one another, and after the scene, the player is awarded with the pin Frosty Friendship, very on the nose. When going into the Shibuya stream on day 6, the player will obtain one of the pins from the year-long ensemble. The pins are named St. Vare's Uppercut, St. Astaw's Shrapnel, St. Autumnus's Strike, and St. Heim's Shotgun. These are all names of Roman deities. Vare is the personification of spring, Astaw's is the personification of summer, Autumnus is the personification of autumn, and Himes is the personification of winter. The description for each pin notes that they are all engraved with the text, Season's Greetings. Today's final boss is Susukichi in his noise form, Cerevis Cantus. Susukichi was born on October 13th, and October is associated with the deer, which is why his noise form is a deer. He also has the kanji for the word deer embedded in his name. Fear the deer. Also, this whole fight is an homage to Yodai Higashizawa's boss fights from the first game. It takes place in roughly the same location with a similar noise form and also has two phases, one where he sits and one where he stands. Also, they both take place in a dark and stormy time. Not long after, the battle against Shiba begins and while we don't see his noise form, we do see that his noise symbol is that of a butterfly, just like the pendant he always wears. He was born on June 21st and that that month represents the butterfly. Just before starting the inversion, Kubo refers to it as Showtime. This might not actually be an easter egg, but I'd like to think it's a possible reference to Persona 5 since Kubo is voiced by Xander Mobis who is also the voice of Joker. Also, I believe he does not call it Showtime in the Japanese version for what that's worth. Rindo tries the final day a few more times and we finally meet Rhyme. She has a new design that not only carries the same symbol as Beat's new design, but if you look closely, you can see that she still wears her pendant from the first game just under her clothes now. During this conversation, they bring up Reaper Creeper, which was a sort of minigame in the first game. And also, Rhyme and Kaye have a little chat about Kaye's dream, which really resonates with Rhyme, likely because her dream was her still lost entry fee from the first game. When starting Operation Awakening, Neku uses the same pose and line that he uses when scanning in the original game. Focus. Focus. Of course, there have been a ton of recreated poses throughout the game for all of the returning characters. I didn't really find most of them notable enough to mention here, unlike in the anime, but I thought this one was particularly cool. Everything accumulates in the final fight of the Wicked Twisters versus Phoenix Cantus. Phoenix Cantus is supposed to be a representation of Haz's noise form. As far as I can tell, Haz lacks both the kanji for Phoenix in his name and his birthday has no correlation with Phoenix's. But he does have a Phoenix on his jackets. Oh, and his birthday does use repeating numbers just like Hanakoma's, so it's an angel number, 5-5. Five, five. More on Phoenix Cantus though, it has a specific correlation with the final boss of the first game, Draco Cantus. That noise form was supposed to represent Joshua, and both the Phoenix and the Dragon are part of China's five heavenly beasts. The Phoenix and Dragon in particular tend to be used to represent Yin and Yang. As for the other three beasts, there is a turtle, snake, and tiger. You could maybe argue that Megzi Boys' noise form from the first game could represent the snake. As for other angels, Hanakoma's noise form 
is a lion and a tiger, so that fits in. The only one that we haven't seen yet is a turtle. My bet son Sugumi's brother, or just some other character that we haven't met yet. And the final detail for Phoenix Kansas is directly pointed out in the secret reports. It has as many tail feathers as times Rindo has activated replay. And I really hope we never have to fight the creature created from every time Fretz uses Remind. The song backing this boss is World Is Yours. This is another one of those few World Ends of You songs that actually represent a character in particular. In this case, it's Rindo. It even mentions a firebird. And not just that, but it was also the first song heard in the game's opening sequence. Chris Kid Joshua makes his big comeback on this day, and he does so by quoting Romeo and Juliet. This detail is only present in the game's guide, but his birthday was confirmed to be November 1st. His birthday digits are all repeating numbers, just like with Hanekoma and Haz. Kubo is the only angel who doesn't do this, with his birthday being on August 15th. 815 may not be an angel number, but it does belong to a different group of numbers. Numbers. And moreover on Joshua, when introducing himself, he repeats what he says to Neku in his introduction for the first game. Neku reunites with Shiki and the whole scene is a callback to the first game. Her waiting at Hachiko every day is what she said she would do if she made it back to the RG before him. Also, the pan up they do when she sees Neku again is the same sort of pan that they use to reveal most of her true form in the first game. The game ends with the title card changing to say, Neo, the world begins with you, just like happened at the ending of the first game. But the game isn't over yet! Let's finish it all out with another day! The day centers around all of our friends from the Wicked Twisters going to see a Death March concert. Now, if you remember, that was the name of Triple Seven's band from the first game. A few years later, the series composer Takaharu Ishimoto made his own album called Death March as an homage. A few more years later, in the anime, Triple Seven's band gets renamed to Death March. As we last heard, both groups are called Death March. But now here in Neo, we're hearing about Death March again. Which one is it? It's Ishimoto's band, but it's an in-universe one this time. But wait, there's more. If you dash over to Tower Records, you can see that the real-life album that Ishimoto made is being advertised, and this one is still called Death March? Not only that, but this easter egg is visible in the main story as well. Oh, and to top it all off, you can scan someone thinking that they should pick up the new Death March album, which can happen in both the main game and another day. Keep in mind that the game does actually block certain thoughts from appearing in another day if they reference a person or group not present in that day. For example, you can spot thoughts about Buddy Rapids in the main game, but not in another day. So what's up with this? Does Ishimoto's band exists in the main timeline? Is it called Death March or Death March? Or is this person thinking about Triple Seven's band? Who knows if Triple Seven is even alive? He died in the main game, got revived in the anime version of the story, but still can't be spotted anywhere in Neo. So all of this leads me to conclude that I really need to stop thinking about this or my head's gonna explode. Neku mentions how Shibuya Palooza got pushed back several times before ellipses, well, everything. Seeing as another day was added in late in development, I'd say that it's safe to say that this is another reference to COVID-19. Beats mentions how he feels like he isn't getting much screen time, and Neku responds with telling him that it's the younger kid's time to shine. Leaning on the fourth wall a bit, since both Neku and Beat aren't really developed in the game, unlike the new playable characters, since their developments came from the first game. It's spelled out pretty plainly here, but it's also also prevalent as a more subtle theme in the game's main story. Anyway, the two decide to spend their off-screen time playing Tin Pin Slammer as a reference to how the first game's Another Day was all about Tin Pin. Neo really should have made It's Another Day about Alestra, and I will die on that hill. Nagi runs into Sugumi on this day, and the two begin fangirling over Ishimoto's music. Nagi mentions that his latest album is called Twister 2021 Tilda Fun in the Sun. Aside from being yet another reference to Twister, the fact that this version is denoted by both a year and a subtitle makes me think that this could possibly be in reference to the sheer magnitude of versions of Twister that have been made. Brett runs into Kanon and nearly gets scammed into buying some books that I'm not confident he's educated enough to read. Kanon offers them for 240 monthly payments of 10,000 yen, which would put Fretz into 20 years of debt. 
that. The 20 years is an extremely obvious and intended reference to how long the wait between entries felt. One of the hidden events in another day is the rhyme dive sequence. There are a couple of noteworthy details here. Firstly, the dialogue choice confirming that you want to proceed with the scene says, yeah boy, which is a meme originating from the 2015 video by Omega XL XL. The dive shows Rhyme's encounter with some soul pulvis remnants, hence why throughout she keeps referring to a black bird thing. This gives her visions of other timelines and realities. First, she mentions that she's falling and cries out to Beat as a reference to a scene from the first game's opening. Then she confesses to Beat that she was a spy the whole time, just like she does in the first game's Another Day. And lastly, she talks about flying as a noise, just like she did during the first game's story. Some of them don't actually have a clear reference, though. Makes you wonder what other worlds she saw into. And that is a wrap! Three videos, two games, one anime, every easter egg in the series. Well, I guess I left out how one piece of anime merch shows that shows online PFP is canonically just the digits of pi, but oh hey look, I mentioned it right there. Now that's everything. Wow, this has been a ton of work, but I'm really proud to have made it. This one in particular took some extra effort since Neo didn't really have an organized and comprehensive list of secret details before this video. I had to dig up most of this stuff manually from a replay, so there's definitely a solid chance that I missed some stuff. If I had to guess, I probably missed some of Fret's song or meme references, so maybe one day I'll revisit the topic, who knows. Until then, get to talking in the comments and let me know if you know about anything that I left out. Well, you know what I could never leave out? Our patrons! Special thanks to Bacon King, Kazer, Nero Jacob Kurotama, Willpower784, and Wonderland Snack. They're all a huge help in making videos like this possible. Alright, see you in next month's expose.